Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are. We bless you in the name of the Lord and um, we welcome you, Susie, as you take us through uh, some knowledge that you've certainly gained and um, you're going to share with us about AI. And uh, we just thank you, Lord, for this tech watch um, on this day of February 9. And at 6 a.m. Jerusalem time. And um, yeah, just want to bless you in the name of the Lord. I want to declare over you, Susie, you're the head and not the tail. You're above only and not beneath. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand and none shall touch you because you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. So, Father, we just thank you for your awesome power your goodness, your greatness, and your faithfulness to Susie, to her family, and for blessing the works of her hands. And Lord, giving her the words that you've already um, designed for her to uh, share with us today. So thank you, Jesus. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, and we bless you, Susie. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. I received that. Um, thank you for praying over this watch. Um, I'd like to start with a worship song, um, so let me share my screen. Uh, I was on a walk this afternoon, and uh, this song dropped. It's it's a very it's I mean it's not a new song, but it's kind of kind of old, about eight years, nine years old. Uh, but I clearly heard the Lord say, "This is what I want want uh, for for worship." So uh, let me share my screen. to the room 
You're muted, Susie. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> um, yes, Father God, we thank you for this time. And Lord, um, we ask for your voice to speak through um, and come through very clearly, Lord. Um, is this, is, is this is only going to be a very basic introduction, Lord. I ask for uh, your wisdom, your eyes and your ears for all of us so we can hear and, um, and hear what you want us to hear. And Lord, that we pray in, and declare over this technology industry what you want us to declare and pray. I thank you, Jesus. And um, thank you for the words that you give me to speak today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Uh, let me share my screen again. Can you see my screen? Can you guys see my screen? Yes. 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 I'm going to cut my video out um, just so I don't get distracted by my own picture. Um, so, um, typically, I, I'm I'm the host, and I kind of. Um, bring in speakers. Um, and so this is new for me, so bear with me, please. Um, so I had a last minute cancellation and I was very frantically searching for another speaker. And then I heard the Lord say, uh, you should speak. And I was like, okay, Lord, uh, what do you want me to speak on? Um, and he said that I should speak on, uh, on AI. 
because it's a hot topic lately and uh, everybody is talking about it. And I've had several friends um, talk to me about AI, um, those not in the tech industry. And, you know, I've heard that, you know, Christians are getting worried that they may lose their jobs and that they, you know, AI is just going to take over everybody's jobs and that there is um, going to be trouble times ahead. So um, the Lord wanted us to be calm about this. Um, I believe any technology that uh, gets created in this world is his, is his idea. Now, with every technology, um, there are people that, you know, that use it for the bad. And while there are good uses as well, and um, his idea for, the, for any technology, I feel, is, is for kingdom purposes, for kingdom business to grow and for a kingdom to spread to the ends of the earth. Um, and so, so he asked me to speak on that. And a little bit of a background about myself, I have a master's in uh, signal image processing and artificial neural networks, which is, uh, which is the basis for AI, uh, basis for uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Um, I did this a while ago, um, at that time, you know, when I graduated, uh, there weren't many jobs in, in the AI field. Uh, while I was doing my master's, I did work with my professor uh, in the company that he owned. And, uh, you know, we worked for the Air Force Base. And an interesting case that we did uh, was the pilots, right? Uh, the fighter, uh, fighter plane pilots sometimes claimed that they couldn't hear and then the government had to pay them money. Um, so our project was to take the signals that were coming out of the ears. They're called autoacoustic signals, um, and they are they generated when somebody speaks into the ear, and the hair within the ear moves, and those signals can be captured. And so we built a neural network that would take in these signals. We trained it to recognize what is a good signal, what is a bad signal, uh, what does it mean, uh, you know. Does the signal mean that a person is deaf? Does the signal not mean that a person is deaf? So that was one of the projects that we worked on with the Air Force Base. We worked on uh, several others too, but this one, this one was a very interesting one. Um, we couldn't conclusively come to a place where, you know, where we could say definitively with confidence, right? Um, any, any, any technology, we should be able to say with confidence whether it works the right way or not. And so we were still in the process of building that. And then, you know, the funding kind of stopped and um, we had to move on to other projects. So um, I just wanted to, you know, kind of give a basic brief introduction to uh, artificial intelligence and, um, and, and the prayer points that the Lord, um, you, know, you know, put on my heart. So I thought I would share that with everybody. Um, and uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, so, all right, let's let's talk about what is AI. So, roughly, there are there are three categories. Um, there is narrow AI, there is general AI, and then there is super AI. So I will talk about each one of these um, in the next few few slides that I'm going to share. And then I'll also give examples of um, what each of these means and uh, where can they be seen um, and what is available today in the world. Um, and then and then you know, I'll talk a little bit about uh, what is open AI and what and who is op who is this co company open AI and I'll talk a little bit about that GPT which is uh, something that you know that that's kind of creating waves and fear uh, in a lot of people so I'll talk a little bit about each of these um, and hopefully we will have uh, you know more sessions later on to dig into each one of these areas a little bit more deeper and go into the technicals of each one of them. All right. So narrow AI. What is narrow AI? So most of the AI, actually all of the AI that we see today in the world is narrow AI. It is also called 
um, often referred to as um, weak AI or applied AI. And, and, and this AI is basically, it performs specific tasks, right? It's uh, focused on solving very specific problems within a very narrow vertical. So voice recognition is one of them. Image recognition is one of them, and and signal recognition, like I like I mentioned in my, you know, experience uh, in the work that I did, that is one of uh, that is one of the um, examples of AI. Um, and it also, you know, translation is the other part that um, this this narrow AI covers. Um, so typically, what happens is a system has to be trained by large amounts of data, both positive and negative, and it needs to be taught how to how to recognize the positive, how to recognize the negative, and throw away what is false positive and keep what is the right right value. Um, so so these algorithms basically are based on neural networks, like I talked about. It's they are called artificial neural networks because they learn over time and the, the algorithm learns over time based on the data that it's given that this is the this is the good data, this is bad data, and knows to throw the bad data away. Um, so some of the examples. Um, so Kiri is is one of the uh, examples of uh, narrow AI. Um, Alexa is another example. If you watch Netflix, um, you always see things like um, or like this, or people who watch this movie also watch this these other movies, and we think that you may like this these movies because you watch this other movie. So that is um, it's called recommendation engine. It is built on narrow AI. And similarly, Amazon also uses, you know, when you buy a book, like I bought um, Elijah Legacy. <clears throat> and so it showed me all these other books that, that I could buy, that I would potentially be interested in. So these are all built, uh, built on top of narrow AI. So all the AI that exists in the world today is pretty much narrow AI. Um, so just want you to um, you know remember that make that you know understand that that's why I'm repeating it a few times. All right, so let's move to general AI. Now, general AI it's also known as strong AI, um, and this basically um, refers to any AI that has the ability to perform any intellectual task, any task, right? That a human can. Um, it, sh it should be able to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can do. Um, and, and if given a problem, it should be able to solve the problem like a human being would solve the problem. Not just like a, you know, not a, a, a narrow specific task like uh, uh, the narrow AI does. Um, so it would need to have common sense. It would need to have abilities such as common sense. It needs to be able to reason. It needs to understand natural language and uh, take take the uh, take the tone and uh, all the other things that go with the natural language, and be able to perform tasks just like humans would. Um, in the world today. Um, there is no general AI example that exists, but we have seen a lot of them in the movies. Um, so who knows Rosie the robot made? That is that is um, a strong AI, it's a general AI. You know, it's an example of a, what a general AI could do, right? Um, similarly, um, if you are a Star Wars fan, then you would recognize those two, um, robots, the R2-D2 and uh, 3CPO or C3PO, one of them. I always get mixed up in that. Um, those are the ones that, uh, you know, would, would be considered general AI, right? Um, and the robot in the movie, iRobot, or um, I don't even know how to say this, it's ex machina, I guess. So the robot in there, would also be considered a general AI. Even in the movies, this is this is still a general AI should be able to perform only tasks that the humans can perform. Now, the next one that we want to talk through is um, super AI. Now, what is super AI? Super AI is 
basically hypothetical. It's, it's a future form of artificial intelligence. And um, typically the idea is that it even surpasses human intelligence. We'll be able to do make decisions like humans can, but at a much faster pace and solve problems, do, do able to you know, solve problems, uh, understand multiple domains, take information from various domains that are coming to it, towards it and make sense out of it and then um, make a decision out of that data that comes out of it. Uh, so this concept of su super AI is the one that is often discussed. When somebody talks about AI, this is the AI that people are thinking about, like where you know where um, the robots are able to do as much as human beings and even more. That is what you know. That is what. And, and I have an example of Pinocchio. It's just a just for fun in here, but um, but if you think about it. Um, it was a doll that was a wooden doll that was made and came to life um, and did had, you know, had decision making skills and, um, you know, would do things um, lie like a human being and do everything like a human being and even more sometimes. So um, even, you know, the, it is not clear at that point that this kind of AI is even a possibility. Uh, can we even create a system like this? Um, experts in this area have like opinions, differing opinions, but but they all seem to think that there will be consequences of creating such a super AI. But at this point, we don't even know, um, don't even know if this is even a possibility. So those are the three types of AI that you know generally people talk about when there is AI. Uh, conversations happening. Now, so recently we have heard a lot about chat GPT, right? People have tried it out and there are a bunch of videos being made, you know, and I have seen videos on, um, on TikTok and Instagram reels that are talking about, oh, this AI is just making our, um, you know, making our, uh, uh, it's going to make our life so difficult and, uh, you know, it's, it knows about Christ and it doesn't want to talk about Christ and things like that. I've heard uh, things like that. Well, OpenAI is a research organization um, and they are basically interested in AI and machine learning. Um, and their goal, as they state, is that they promote AI that is beneficial to humans. So as in, you know, that makes our lives better, that makes our, um, you know, makes things that we do normally in, a, in you know, routine things that we do that can you know help with that that is their that is their claim um they also built some tools uh one of the tools that they built which we hear a lot about is a generative pre-trained transformer gpt3 that's a language model that they have built um now transformer in there actually is one of the one of the types of the neural networks um that that um that they have base this uh, language model on. And then they have built an open AI API, which other companies, other people, everybody, anybody in the world can use to build their own um, applications, right? To, to build their own applications um, and uh, to, to help, help whatever they need to help with. And uh, this is where I feel like Christians need to start thinking about how can we leverage this this technology. What is uh, what are the problems that we can solve with this technology? And um, you know, you don't have to be technical to be able to you know understand uh, or to be able to come up with an idea that that maybe this um, these tools that they have built can help solve that we can build on top of and help solve. Um, so that that would be the main uh, you know takeaway I would like. Um, you know, you everyone go away with is you don't have to be in the field of technology to to come up with ideas. The Lord can give ideas to anyone, right? Um, I'm always I always bring up Bezalel and Uholiab from um, Exodus. Um, these are the two guys that um, the Lord like they they are covered in 
four chapters or five chapters in Exodus, and they, they get a lot of airtime in the Bible. And we don't know if they had if they had the um, capability to build the tabernacle and build everything that needed to be built for the tabernacle. But the Lord said, I am going to give them my wisdom, my technology, so that they are able to do what we want them to do, what I want them to do. I, the way I, they, are, they are going to build the tabernacle like I want it built based on my instructions. Now, he did give them very detailed instructions, and I don't see why he wouldn't do that today for us. And that's, that's my belief. Anyway, so, um, so next, what is chat GPT? It's basically a um, conversational AI language model that was developed by OpenAI. It was trained with a massive amount of text data, and they used the data from internet, right? And it, it uh, covers a bunch of languages, some of the languages I have listed um, on, this, um, on this slide. Now, the quality of how it responds to questions that you ask, basically the specific task that it is built to do is answer questions. It takes some of the prompts and come, comes up with text completion. Like if you ask it to write an essay on a few topics that you give, like you have to give it a prompt and it, and it goes, searches the internet for, for the text for that particular topic and builds, builds a, an intelligent and very um, sophisticated uh, paragraph or two that that helps you like that helps you uh, well I, I don't know if it helps you but it builds builds the um, text that you need uh, with with the prompts that you have given it um, and this is based uh, this is based on basically on the transformer networks the the uh, artificial neural network which is named transformer. Um, I, I won't go into too much details of all the technology, like I said. Um, so, you know, it, it has been trained with a large amount of data, and it is one of the most powerful language models to date. But again, it is only as good as the, um, as the, the quality of the text that it was fed. Like if in some languages, right, if, for example, um, in German, assume that there is not enough text out there on the internet to train it well, which means that the quality of the text that it returns with the questions that you ask in that language may not be as good, you know, because it hasn't been trained to um, train with really good amount of data, good quality data. So um, this does basically, there are several benefits to using it. Um, it, uh, you know, it, it does natural language process processing, like I said. Uh, it takes a lot, it takes your prompts and it generates a bunch of text around it. Um, you you can also fine tune it for like specific tasks. So like uh, like Microsoft is using it to um, using it with uh, and building Bing on top. Bing is a search engine, so to make it much better the search responses that you, you know, when you search for something on Bing, the responses need to be good, right? So um, this will help with that. Um, it, it can, this, the speed at which it, uh, you know, it uh, generates responses is, is really good. I mean, it's, it's not the greatest, but, you know, they're still working on it. And it's um, uh, the speed at, it, at which it delivers uh, the responses will make it easier for virtual assistants. And, you know, you guys have all encountered chat bots where, you know, when you go, uh, when you go to a website to buy something and you, you say, they say chat with us. Uh, in the beginning, it's not, it's not a human person behind that's actually typing responses. It's a, it's a, uh, software that is trying to take the text that you have typed and figure out what you are asking and tries to come up with uh, responses to that. So chatbots are uh, one place where these could be used and virtual assistants, which is like Siri and Alexa, those can be improved uh, more, right? Uh, they can be get more accurate and give more ac accurate answers. Um, and it automates tasks. So, you know, it, uh, it, for companies, it reduces cost, um, so that's that's there. Um, and 
yeah, so these are a few of the benefits that that uh, that this particular AI system uh, provides. Uh, if there are questions on the chat, I'm unable to see right now, but um, you know, I'll try to answer after uh, if I can answer. So this brings me to my last slide, which is basically the prayer topics that I felt like I had covered some of them uh, as I talked through. Um, these are the things that you know that I I sense that we need to pray into. Christians should not. We should not shy away from technology. We should not let the enemy's representatives take over technology because technology is God's idea. And we need to be there at the forefront. And we need to learn. We need to get, get in front of it and use it for kingdom purposes. Um, we should not fear this. Any new technology that comes up, we tend to fear it. Um, we tend to, Christians tend to get into a space of, we don't know, so we are scared of it. And that we should not be in that mindset. The only thing that we, can, we need to fear, the only thing that the Lord tells us to fear is to have the fear of the Lord. And that's the only fear that we should be thinking about. We should dream with the Lord. Like we, it doesn't have to be somebody in technology, but we should dream with the Lord for new ideas. Anyone can dream. Anyone can come up with ideas, right? And reach out to people you know in tech and and say, how how can we build this? How can we come up with this solution? This is something that you know that is pressing for me, pressing for my ministry, pressing for uh, ad advancing the kingdom. How do we do it? So. Think about those kind of things. Dream with him. Let's 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 all dream with him. And 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 basically, the last thing that we need to do pray, uh, that I want to want prayer for is more kingdom businesses rise up from this. More kingdom businesses that uh, take take every technology that is out there and and become more innovative and become. We should be forging ahead. We should be the ones coming up with these ideas. We shouldn't allow the enemy's representatives to be coming up with these ideas. So that these these this is this is what has been on my heart, and I just wanted to share with all of you, and uh, would love for you to pray into all of these things. Uh, Susie, that was um, really, really excellent. I think that there might be a few questions before we jump into prayer. Huh. Okay. I mean, I, I'm loaded up with questions. If I'll, I'll just start. How do you access this GPT? Oh, okay. I should have put the link in there. It's chat.openai.com. Uh, I'll, I'll, put, I'll, put, okay. I'll put the link in the uh, in the. Uh, in the chat window. Okay. And is this API the same thing as an API code that we have to deal with? With yeah, API is basically application programming interface. So it's 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 what is exposed, and uh, you just you just use that to you know. And and there's a bunch of functionality that is hidden behind, and obviously you have to read up on what exactly is available. Right, and then you can leverage that and write your own application on top of it. Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, questions? I do not see questions. Yeah, uh, Susie, thank you. This is Ern Steele. I'm I'm calling in from Mexico. Thank you very much. I mean, this is so so informative, and I I so much like the spirit in which you present this, that we shouldn't uh, be fearful of technology, but as Christians um, take the initiative, ask the Lord, how, how, can, how can we use this? Uh, I have a ministry in, in multiplication and, and, and I'm starting to use uh, uh, Jet GPT. Um, what I'm currently doing is I'm um, sending uh, two Moravian watchwords, so similar 
or, or Herrenhut Losungen in, in the German speaking, uh, to, together with a devotional. And so mm -hmm. I thought, um, well, uh, couldn't, what would ChatGPT do if I ask it to write a devotional? And yeah. the, call, the um, and I did other experiments with, uh, with things. Um, when ChatGPT, when you ask something very specific, like about a, a scientific theory or recipe, it's 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 more like a child, like an all-knowing child, and it makes things up. And then yeah. it sounds very good initially. And then as you go on and probe deeper, and and then you say, yeah, that's not quite right. But so but it's it's in a very convincing way, very articulate way. But it's a the feeling of the conversation is totally different when you talk about spiritual things. It's so it's so amazing. It's actually um, enriching to talk mm -hmm. about it. I mean, there were some questions. How does ChatGPT look like? I mean, I, I have it here on my my screen. I could share it if if, if that would be useful. So, yeah. you want me to do that? Let's see if I I can do that. Um, Alison, can you make him a co-host? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I can't. I said. Let's you know, see. If I... I'm, I'm trying to find where you are yeah. online. Yeah. Hmm. No, still, still. You are not. Hang on. Is it not Sorry. working? It's slow. There you okay. go. Right there, now. there it goes. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay. Now my my share screen disappeared. Here it is. Okay, share screen. Okay, can you can you see this? Yeah. Okay. So 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 here I took the 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 Moravian watchword, the Herrenhut Losung for today. But well, mm -hmm. today it's 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 Mexico time here, it's in the evening here, so it's not for tomorrow Jerusalem time. Uh, and I ask it, please reflect on those two verses. Our heart is clad in the Lord because we trust in his holy name. Mm -hmm. uh, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. And then it goes on. The two verses you quoted reflect a sense of joy and trust in the Lord, as well as the importance of prayer in maintaining a close relationship with God. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it goes on. And, and then I said, mm, okay, okay. Then I said, rewrite these thoughts and related ones as a devotional. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it, it goes. A heart filled with joy and trust, a devotional reflection. Dear friends, have you ever felt your heart filled with joy and peace because of your trust in the Lord? This is a sentiment expressed in, in Psalm 30, 32. And I mean, you can already see the, the quality of it, right? Yeah. Um, then, I, then I say, well, end the devotional with three questions that will moderate the reader to ponder mm -hmm. the meaning of the devotional during the day. Right. And then it goes on, it gives, me, it gives me this, and then take a moment to reflect on the following questions as you go about your day. One. How does your trust in the Lord bring joy to your heart? Mm -hmm. How can you make prayer a more consistent part of your daily routine? Mm -hmm. In what ways can you cultivate a heart of joy and gratitude, even in difficult circumstances? Mm, I thought, okay, interesting. Let's skip this one. This is more of... Um... And then I said, okay, well, what answers do you suggest to the three questions that you raised? Mm-hmm. And then it goes on. I mean, it doesn't skip a beat. And then he said, let's see. My scrolling. Yeah, there it is. Uh, question one. How does your trust in the Lord bring joy to your heart? Answer. Trusting in the Lord brings joy to my heart because it gives me a sense of security and peace, knowing that I'm not alone in my struggles and that I have a loving and powerful God who is always with me. When I trust in the Lord, I'm filled with hope and confidence, even in the face of challenges, knowing that he will work all things together for good and 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 so on. And so I I I try to be polite with it here. And <laughs> and, and and if if I now say re, I notice there are I think two two brothers and sisters from Germany. If I re rewrite the mm -hmm. devotional mm -hmm. for a German audience. Mm -hmm. 
And here this, you're seeing this now in real time. It's it's thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, it's thinking about it as in it goes and collects the and, data. And then it goes, ein Herz voller Freude und Vertrauen, eine Andachtsreflexion. Liebe Freunde, habt ihr jemals das Gefühl gehabt? And so on. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe sure. some of my German friends can would, would later on um, wants to say something about it. But I just wanted to give you a, a little introduction uh, yeah. in it. I think I can I can stop stop here the, the sharing of it. Yeah. So the reason you find it um, you find it it's childish is because it's been only trained on only a certain amount of probably Christian information and it. It brings up only things that it can search, right? Like it's not thinking on its own. It's just searching the internet for various pieces of information and then putting them together in a cohesive fashion. So, um, so I, I thank you actually for doing that. Uh, I, I should have done a little bit of a demo. I didn't think about logging in and doing it of a demo, but you know that's it's um. It shows you the level of uh, the level of. I mean, this is not something that can take away people's jobs at this point. Um, and AI is only as good as you train it, as good as you code it. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and it's it, it has surprisingly good deep um, knowledge, right? It knows all the Bible. There are lots of sermons published, lots of devotionals. So it's actually a realm uh, that, that, that's very, very positive for Christians. I mean, I, I mentioned that I do this for a Spanish-speaking uh, mm -hmm. audience. And um, with, with kind of an, the first thing that helped us tremendously, the AI, came two or three years ago, this, this enormously good translations that are now available. I mean, five years ago, we laughed about it, wouldn't use it. And suddenly it's, it's so good, it's, it's sometimes difficult to know what's the original and what's the, what's the translation, because that's one of my projects. I'm, I, I have mm -hmm. a lot of, of, of source sermons and devotionals, like a huge archive. And since I feel a calling for multiplication, I'd like to make that useful, what mm -hmm. was said at one particular place and time in a certain language, mm -hmm. in a different location, in a different time, in a different language, because I feel once the Lord says something and his word is, is alive and it stays alive. And um, so... I'm not sure where my thought was was going, but but this was the, the first time where I felt that AI was really useful in this automatic translations. Yeah, yeah, and and think about it. The Bible Museum that when I went to the Bible Museum, they said that you know uh, one would have thought that we have covered pretty much every language. Our Bible is translated into all languages, but no, it's um, two thirds of the world doesn't have a Bible in their language. So will this make it simpler and easier? Maybe it will. Um, is there enough text for it to, you know, to for it to learn and understand the language and uh, do the translation into that language? Maybe I don't know. So the, these are the things that we need to, uh, you know, dream with the Lord and ask Him. Like maybe, maybe Bible translation is not something that He wants us to do right now. Maybe there is something else that He wants us to do. I don't know what He wants us to do with this technology. So. Um, this is where yeah, I, did, you know, I did. I did. I did some experience, for example, in in in, in this realm, and, and and I said, well, sort of pretending, right? We are in a in a prayer session, and there's someone joining us from Iraq. Um, mm -hmm. He has questions. Uh, uh, lead him to Jesus. What what prayer? It uh, it doesn't mi uh, miss a beat. I mean, it's all a very convincing conversation. It can. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, I mean, we need to pray a lot about it, but, um, and then I said it, well, Ahmed is from the northern Iraq, he's not good, good enough, it's in his English, do it in Kurdish, and then it goes, yeah. without missing yeah. a beat, it, it yeah. does the same thing in Kurdish. There's a lot of, for Christians to explore, a whole new possibilities of missionary work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Thank you, yeah. Ernst, that was great. Yeah. Um, should we go to a prayer session? Uh, Susan? 
Yeah, um, I am so totally enthralled by this whole thing because it answers a lot of questions that I have. We're increasingly needing to translate things. And mm -hmm. is this open AI better than like Google Translate or Convey This? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely better um, than, than, uh, than Google Translate for sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because um, mm -hmm. I'm in the process of translating one of my book, one of my books, I'd like to do others in Spanish. So mm -hmm. I need to talk with you about <laughs> how this works. Um, <clears throat> Father, I just, uh, I, I think, Susie, one of the things we need to pray for is you and possibly Ernst or anybody else that's involved with the technology, pray for us to get rid of this fear and and to be able to dive into technology knowing that you know all of our I, I'm I'm at the point where I don't care if they know everything about me. Know it. Let the testimony of Jesus come forward. <laughs> you yeah. know. And yeah. so far I feel like there's been a tremendous protective hand of God over the global watch. It's just I, I'm very, I, I want to stay. Father, I thank you for your protection over Christians in um, technology who are using this space, the cyberspace for your kingdom. Mm -hmm. I pray, Father, for multiplication of your kingdom, even now that things are stirring in our spirits of what we can do, what we can accomplish uh, it, through using technology for your kingdom purposes, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 Did you have something, Shirley? There. Yes, I think um, artificial intelligence is not to be afraid of. What um, some of the people that I'm in a in a meeting with. Uh, people that are doing business and ministry and, and bridge building and communities, they are busy creating something that can go on ground and detect and remove landmines. There are so many areas in Africa where landmines have been placed on good ground. Most of the ground has been so over, um, I don't even know what the word is, stimulated, and that people have actually designed I'm going to get them to come on and talk about it sometime, but they've designed a, what they call a carbon negative system and for soil. And it can change. I mean, it's, it's anyway, they, that in itself, but can you imagine so many of the lands that have got landmines on it and things where people, they don't want people to go and farm mm -hmm. for various yeah. reasons. One is, is um, from, from, um, being terrorists, the others is control. Mm -hmm. They don't want people to go in and use that land. So yeah. it, can you imagine if they could take out the landmines, mm -hmm. detect and take out the landmines? There are so many in Africa. There's so many countries like that. Um, secondly, I have used AI. I've used it quite extensively. And one of the things I use it for is with my um, doctoral dissertation. Um, my doctoral dissertation, I wrote from just using the plain internet, but in, in, in trying to put the words into everyday layman language, um, I've used it a little bit, but you need to, but I need to say this, Ernst, and, and I need to say this to anybody who's wanting to use this, be very cautious because number one, there is plagiarism. There mm -hmm. are sites because it is extracting, it's not coming out of nowhere. It is extracting somebody else's information. Exactly. So um, there is um, Grammarly that has got a plagiarism checker. So when you mm -hmm. use stuff, put the stuff on and check for the plagiarism, number one. Number yeah. two, if it's in a different language, I don't think it would, would, would really apply. Number two is there is not just pure Christian information out there yeah, there exactly. is a lot of yes there's a lot of filtered stuff and a lot of other information now all these things sound great but you need to make sure that everything you do is with the plumb line of the word of god mm. that mm. is in 
in, that is integral to anything like this. And also so, teachers and and I'm so sorry, Susie, one more thing. Teachers and, and um, education facilities are actually working ways now that they can detect when somebody has put something through artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they are they they are ahead of that. Go ahead, Susie. Thanks. Yeah, so I, mean, I just want to say something. In Israel, they're already using for the landmine. I mean, they, they're doing it like in the Golan Heights, the clearing mines that were put, you know, even in the six six day war. And, you know, like there is a way that they are doing it and land, land's really being uh, cleared mm -hmm. from mines. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true, Esther. Um, I actually worked on a couple of products and I worked with somebody from South Africa on on one of the landmine projects. Uh, so I don't know if it is the same. It's called uh, Dimension Data is the name of the company that uh, I worked with. Yeah, it's um, in Israel. I'm talking about Israel. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And yeah. then uh, I wanted to say, actually, there are people that there, there is actually a very young kid that came up with um, with an application that he built that checks to see if it came from chat GPT or if it was a human written, uh, mm. you know, uh, text. So, yeah, there are, you are very right. We it's basically it's just pulling everything from the Internet. It doesn't have a mind of its own, that can't think on its own. Mm. And it takes the sources that it's fed and uses the information from those sources and <laughs> you have to collate information. And several times I've asked a few questions for which it doesn't have answers and then it fails. It says, oh no, something went wrong. So also, you also, it doesn't tell you the source because if you ask it for the source, it will never give you the source. I have asked it a hundred times because I, as a scholar, I want to go and because you want to um, give the credit, give, give credit, you you have to. And you a lot of to. people on our chats and whatever else, they just take somebody's information and dump it like it's their own. No, 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 you can't do that ever. Yeah, You need to yeah. say who, who this is from, who said this, what the site was, what the source was. That is critical. But it the AI will never tell you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Susan, my son, that is his expertise, and he's, a, I mean, basic aerospace engineer, but like he is, uh, he said that the AI will never outsource us with this way of thinking. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, Hannah, you have your hand raised. Oops, just trying to get this opened up. Yeah, I wanted to pray into your fourth prayer point, Susie, because this is my biggest concern as um, a watchman. And the reason why is I'm seeing a trend of marginalizing believers who work in the tech industry just over these very issues that, that you've used. Instead of partnering with, there's a tendency to either judge, be critical, or just stand in prayer and see no responsibility that really what's happening right now is a convergence um, of recognizing that those who work in tech are creatives. This is where they work, but at heart, they're creatives. And so if we align with that, what we need is a prophetic voice to come in from the church. As you say, dream together. Where are the prophets who are willing to go before the Father and say, we want these blueprint blueprints to come down from heaven over those who are working in this industry and we're not going to just dump the responsibility so abba what i'm praying and asking is that we as watchmen on this wall catch the vision of what you're doing for the future it's not just about mission missions yes there's much possibility and ernst i really thank you for everything that you shared tonight because yes we can see a lot of possibility in this but it goes so much deeper than this so much deeper this is in every single sphere of our culture and uh oh sorry my whole <laughs> screen is bouncing around here abba i'm just saying can we catch the vision of what you're about in this and start partnering together with tech partnering together and not just calling forth the prophetic out of tech again because i think that's what we're doing is we're seeing there's a lot of worship leaders 
because they're creatives, there's a lot of worship leaders within the tech industry, the believers. And so we say to them, go into deeper worship, pull on the Lord, pull the prophetic down. No, 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 no. This isn't right. It's not partnership when you do that. You're, you're just offsetting what, you know, what, what is our call and our responsibility. So Father, I'm saying, would you deepen the vision? Would you give us the vision that we all catch it? And, and Susie, thank you so much for sharing what you shared tonight, because you gave us such a clear overview of this and the potential of where it's heading. So I just pray that we take all of these prayer points and really begin to dig into them as watchmen right now, because this needs to open up. He's going to move quickly and he wants us to move together with you and not just off it onto your shoulders. That's not a right yoke. His yoke's yeah. easy and you're carrying a lot. And that's what I'm sensing. Well, so um, you're and nailing and something here. Can I do one thing? We have, some, like my son, left the Lord. We have so many kids that are so talented in the high tech industry that they left the Lord, you know, like in university, in the army. And, you know, that is a lot of the source of, you know, talent that God can use. Yes, I agree. Uh, you you both brought up something very significant here. This uh, we've got to carry this on, Susie, to uh, have another session or two on this. Um, but I want to tell you, everyone on this line, that when we started to use Zoom, the Lord said, "I want you to take this uh, the cyberspace for my kingdom." Yeah. And we've carried that as a as a driving force behind that, even though we've received a lot of criticism. Well, you're not meeting, you're not doing, you're just sitting in. No, we're taking kingdom space here. Amen. And, you know, uh, talk about prophecy. Isaiah prophesied of the day where your watchmen will raise up their voices. They shall sing together and they mm -hmm. shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. The fulfillment mm -hmm. of this is before our very faces right now. And I'm going to call forth a strength in all of us here to father of the spiritual prophetic to be speaking into the cyberspace that make way, make way for the kingdom of God, because it's coming. It is at hand and AI will line up with it in Jesus name. Yes. We cannot let this loose into the enemy's hand. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And father, I pray a blessing over Susie over the tech watch that we are working arm in arm with shields up, swords held to go forward in the advance of the kingdom in this whole area in Jesus mighty, mighty name. We thank you for Ernst, for all those who are on this line that are involved in the tech industry and those who have been hurt by the church because they're in tech industry, because of the blindness. Father, I call them out into health and healing and to have voices for such a time as this, mm -hmm. that, that the depth of your spirit moves right into those wounds and raises it up into resurrection life in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, and, be, and before you, yeah, sorry, before you close out, Susie, we too want to repent as watchmen, that we have put a yoke on you that God has never intended to fall on your shoulders. So I so agree with Sue. We ask for times of refreshing to come over believers who work in the tech industry, who've been marginalized by us, the rest of the church, who were not willing to take this as part of our watch. So I ask your forgiveness as one of those. I truly do. Would you please forgive us? Because it's been far too heavy a yoke. His yoke is not heavy. Yes, yes. Thank you, um, Hannah. And yes, I, I have forgiveness for, for the church. I, I was hurt by the church, by the way, you know, I, I'm, by the way, church speaks about, you know, how can you work for this company? How can you, you know, questions like that rise up and it's like, uh, this is, this is hard. This is where the Lord placed me and this is my mission field. Uh, but yes, I do forgive. Thank you. Well, it's going to birth out something new, um, Susie. Um, would you pray over us that you would, that spirit of fear would just be yeah. bound over the over the watchman? We have got to stand up and know that we can communicate, communicate well. We're going to emphasize communicating well. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so um, before I pray, Shirley, did you have something to add? I see your hand up. Yeah, just one thing. Um, 
when when I did my doctoral dissertation, Sue will know she's she's done two master's degrees. Susie will know she's got a master's as well. Um, I had to read, and I think it was 145 books that I had to read because you've got to reference and you've got to rewrite. Now try and rewrite someone like Grudem or or Piper. You know, these are these are professors, and you need to actually say what they they saying, but don't use their language. Uh, yeah. You know, you 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 can't uh, plagiarize, so it's really really hard work. That's on the one side, but on the other side, as Ernst was saying, this is an incredible tool for ministry. And mm -hmm. instead of shrinking back and going, oh, we can't get involved with this. No, 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 no. Let's say, Lord, what are you saying? I mm -hmm. want to be confident. I want to be bold. Lord, help me. This is new territory, people. This is going and this, this, the, the sea is opening. It's leveling the playing field. You don't yeah. have to be a tech genius. Yeah. You don't have to have a doctorate or a degree or anything. You need yeah. to have an open heart and say, Lord, help me. But you need to use it with wisdom. Yeah. Yes. You need to be filled mm -hmm. with the spirit and you need to say, Holy Spirit, help. Mm -hmm. AI is not there for help. Yep. Lord, you are helping, and this is a tool. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 In the word of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father God, for this time. Uh, Lord, thank you for, um, for planting the seeds, Lord. And Lord, I pray boldness over church. I pray boldness, Lord, your boldness. Um, just like just like all the disciples were so bold that they spoke your word, even though they were um, they, they were not they were not they didn't have masters, they didn't go to that midrash, but they were they did not shrink back. They spoke with boldness, and so Lord, I declare that boldness over the church. That church will not shrink from technologies anymore. We we rebuke that. We, we put an end to that. We say no more, no more. The church will join hands with technology and take it to places where the kingdom, kingdom will spread. Kingdom is the thing that we are most interested in. Both your children in <laughs> and your children in church, we are both interested in the kingdom business. What are you saying, Lord? What are you wanting us to do? And where do you want to take this? That is what we are most interested in. Lord, and these saints, they hear your voice so clearly. Lord, drop those blueprints over them. And, and just given the joy that comes out of finding solutions that come from only comes from you. Lord, I pray that the only fear that the church experiences, whether it is with technology or using computers or talking about new technology, any anything tech related, Lord, that the only fear that they succumb to is the fear of the Lord, the awe of the Lord. And, and your presence walks with us. Your presence takes us places where we are supposed to go. Your presence is what is most important, Lord. And when we are in awe of you, just like you, you were with the Israelites in the desert, in a pillar of fire, in a pillar of cloud, Lord, you will do the same for us because you are a God who promised that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You are with us all the time. So, Lord, I pray that that the fear of technology is, is a thing of the past in the church and that we, we are rising up to new joy and new ideas and new dreams that come only from you, Papa. We thank you that you are placing this in all of us. Pray all these in your very precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Susie, uh, thank you for hearing from the Lord on this. You were to speak today, and uh, I, for one, am very, very grateful for this teaching. Thank you. Thank you. And we will talk about more sessions ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. All right. All right. Awesome. Excellent watch, Susie. Yeah. Bless your heart. Yes. Bless your heart. Yes. This is exactly where he wanted yes. you to go tonight. Exactly. Absolutely. Bold girl. Bold, yep. courageous girl. We love you. <laughs> we love you. God bless everyone. Everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Europe watch next. <laughs> bye 